Oh, that's really, really bad. <laughs> Good morning, Internet. It is five to eight in the morning, and welcome back to the channel. I am in Stockholm, Sweden, and I'm leaving the city now. Ronin got a service yesterday, uh, so she got an oil change, change of oil filter, they changed the air filter, what else? Ah, that was it, I think they did some small checks, uh, adjusted the light a little bit, looped the chain, that sort of thing, but the main thing was the oil change. So Ronan is all ready for more kilometers. So I'm leaving Stockholm today and I'm riding kind of northwest. And I'm planning to ride uh, a little over 300 kilometers today with uh, a stop in Uppsala. And Uppsala is about 70 kilometers north of Stockholm. It has a fascinating history. I believe now it's quite a, a modern university town. But there's a lot of history there, so I want to make a stop there and then uh, ride some nice back roads and then tonight I want to go camping. So that's roughly the plan. It is super quiet on the streets here in uh, Stockholm. Everybody is still sleeping, which is very nice. I can make a easy exit out of the city. There's a museum there, but I see that only opens at 11, so a bit too early for that. But let's have a look around here. So where I am now, Uppsala, has been a very important religious and economic site already since the 3rd century. And it was known as the residence of the famous Swedish kings from the Ingling dynasty. And later, in the Middle Ages, I believe, it became a pagan site. And there was a temple here for the gods Odin, Thor, and one more, and Freyr. And according to legend, in the Viking era, people from all over Scandinavia would flock to this temple every nine years uh, to pay sacrifice to the Nordic gods. And here on my right, you have what they call the Royal Mounds. And according to folklore and ancient mythology, these mounds actually belong to those gods that I mentioned before, uh, Odin, Fair, and Thor. But others believe that these mounds actually contain the remains of three kings of that Ingling dynasty, the first known Scandinavian dynasty. And their names were Aun, Egil, and Adils. And because those were kings, these mounds are now known as the Royal Mount. So it's a shame that I cannot go to the museum, but uh, all right, it was still a nice visit. I just really like places like this, that if you would come here without knowing anything about the place, you wouldn't even 
I don't know, blink an eye and you just see three hills, you'd be like, yeah, okay, whatever. And it only really starts to speak to you when you know the history and you can imagine that already in the third century there were people here and kings were living in this area from the earliest Scandinavian dynasty. I don't know, I just find it really fascinating. Anyway, let's hit the road. I'm planning to ride some nice back roads, hopefully, to a big lake called Lake Simlan. So that's the, that's the goal, we're gonna go there. So let's go. <laughs> So these are uh, traffic cameras, these ones. <laughs> They're everywhere here, so I have to uh, be a bit careful not to drive too fast. Because this one was uh, photographing from the front and obviously I don't have a license plate there. But sometimes, usually in a couple hundred meters, it's one on the other side. And within Europe they have all these uh, agreements nowadays so I think if I would speed in Sweden I will get the fine sent to the Netherlands <laughs> see this is the one the other way so now it's photographing the backside see <laughs> 80 river for a while now oh and it's so lovely around here i love all the red swedish houses and then there's some forest and some agriculture it's just really lovely no traffic whatsoever just swedish countryside everywhere somewhere in that area is supposed to be a place where I can camp right over there maybe I'll just pitch the tent here that's even better Okay, tent is up. Let's park rolling a little bit closer to the tent. It's like my own little peninsula. How about that? So I'm all settled and I created a little food station from wood that was laying around. People have been making some fire here. And today is the day that I am going to open a can of surströmming. And this is one of the smelliest, smelliest foods in the world. So I thought this would be a good moment to do it because I'm completely by myself. It's even illegal, I believe, <laughs> or at least not allowed to open a can of these in public places because the smell is just horrific. Apparently, but we're gonna find out. I'm going to open it under water. The Swedish people say that that helps with the smell. So I am going to do that. I am carrying around one of these. I use this to uh, do the dishes when I'm camping. So I can just fill it with water here from the lake and then I'm going to open the can under water. But before I do so, I will tell you a little bit more about this surströmming. So it's a tradition here in Sweden and what's inside is Baltic herring which is a herring species a little bit smaller than the Atlantic herring 
and they catch these fish around April, May, just before spawning. And then they put just enough salt with it, so it doesn't rot, but instead it starts fermenting. And a long time ago, in the 1940s, some producers of surströmming, they managed to get uh, the Crete out that it needs at least six months of fermenting, because that's when the real taste comes out. And I believe that rule is not really there anymore, but now traditionally, the third Thursday in August, they start selling them from that year. So I'm in the right season here in Sweden. So I bought this one yesterday in Stockholm. And the man who was running the fish shop, um, he was super nice. He explained me a lot about it. And he also gave me some potatoes and some red onion. And then I bought this in the supermarket, flat, flatbread. And um, so it's supposed to go on that. So I'm going to try to <laughs> uh, do this Swedish tradition honor and uh, prepare this uh, surströmming so it goes on the bread oh yeah and then he also gave me butter and i still have this scallis from that ferry from gotland so this is that caviar mayonnaise <laughs> type thing also typical swedish so i'm also gonna stick that on it the only problem is is that i brought a can opener from the netherlands i didn't use it at all and today i want to use it and i cannot for the life of me find it so I have to open the can with a knife, not ideal. And one more important thing is that you can see that it's slightly bulging. And they say that the more the can bulges, the further the fermenting process has been and the worse the smell. Yeah, it's, it's been a really long tradition in Sweden. They say that they started fermenting herring in the 16th century because Sweden had had a war and there was a shortage of salt. So they didn't have enough salt to put with the fish and then yeah the herring started fermenting and well now people in sweden still eat it i think we'll have to wait with the opening of the can until the rain is gone yeah every now and then there's a few drops now it's raining a little bit more but i'm sure the if this cloud passes it will be dry again all right there we go so put the can in the water oh i have to hold it how am i going to do this hold it with one hand Stick the knife in. Okay, moment of truth. Okay, okay. There's some air coming out. I don't smell anything. This is good. Oh god. Oh, there's a smell. <laughs> oh, that's really bad. Oh. Oh. So suddenly, don't ask me why, it is full of flies here. <laughs> Some Swedish people told me not to open the can in an area where there's bears, because there's brown bears in Sweden. And well, there's no bears here, I think. But I didn't think of the flies, to be honest. Oh man, the smell is just so bad. Okay, we have to soldier on. I'm going to prepare the flatbread now, uh, but actually there's one more step because the fish, the herring, it's not filet, so it's just the whole fish, they chuck it in the can <laughs> and then let it ferment. So I actually have to clean out the fish or at least not eat the belly. So I kind of have to dissect the whole thing as well before I can eat it. <laughs> Indulging in culture, that's, that's what it's all about, right? It's, it's just, it's not human anymore. This smell is just so strong. Unbelievable. Oh, oh. Uh, okay. So I'll show you. There's the fish. Ooh. See, it's in their hole. There's a the fish. This is unreal, really. Number two. There we got number three, and then I let, you can see it. See this gooey stuff? <laughs> this is so gross. <gasps> oh my God. What am I doing? Okay, it's out. This is number three. I'm going to cut it. Onions. 
Well, <laughs> welcome to Sweden. Mmm. <laughs> it's super acidic. What can I say? The taste is... Uh... To be honest, I prefer the normal herring <laughs> for this. But um, now the taste is definitely a lot better than the smell. But yeah, very acidic. So, well, my first surf trimming experience. It's, um, well, I guess you have to try for yourself when you come to Sweden. <laughs> All right, as promised, I was going to show you uh, where I went today. So I left from Stockholm this morning and then I rode to Uppsala, which was here. And now I am I rode a little bit west towards the border with Norway, which is over here. And I was planning to reach Lake Siljan, but I, I stopped just a little bit before. So I just didn't reach the lake here. And so I'm sitting in my tent again, because as you can probably hear, it is <laughs> raining again. Anyway, the reason that I am riding a little bit towards the border with Norway is that in the next video, I'm going to ride a little bit of the Swedish Tet, the Trans Euro Trail. I want to uh, do some off-road, uh, ride some gravel roads in the forest, maybe some single trail even, I don't know. So I'm really looking forward to that um, and the Swedish TET is about 2,000 kilometers I think all the way from the south to pretty much all the way to the north of uh, Sweden So it's really long and I'm just gonna catch uh, a little bit of it um, So that will be in the next video. So that was it for today I really hope you liked this video if you did please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe down below and then I'll see you in the next video